Trade Hackers, welcome back. Today is Thursday, the day after Christmas, December 26th. We are back. The machines are back on. Looking at the S&P 500, what do you know? Another up day. S&P is up about 10 or 11 points at this point. We still got about an hour and a half left before the market closes. The uphill grind continues. So what did we do today? A couple things. We added a new duck in Roku. R-O-K-U. One thing I wanted to point out here is if you look at the monthly implied volatility, you know, Roku's only a $145 stock, right? So typically trading these iron ducks usually only sets up correctly if, if we're looking at, you know, some of these higher price symbols, $200 and above. But the reason Roku is setting up so nicely is look at this monthly implied volatility, you know, with 15 days left, We've got a monthly IV of 67%, 65% out here in this cycle, you know, so it's just much higher. On a comparison basis, if you look at a stock like Tesla, which has been a very volatile, you know, up and down stock, kind of same time frame, I mean, you're looking at only 50 compared to over 60% in Roku. If you look at a stock like Netflix, which again has traditionally been kind of a high beta, big mover. I mean, in the 15 days, you're looking at a implied volatility of 28%. So that's why Roku has been so attractive to trade just because that monthly implied volatility has been so high. So you can collect more premium, get the juice you need to make those work. So that's what we did there. Put a new one on there. Looking at a couple of our other positions, we've got a, an iron duck in Tesla. Speaking of Tesla, prices run up higher. We've got about a 13% chance of it getting back into our max profit area. And so uh, we're probably going to take this off tomorrow and just book that beak profit and move on. And then that one's got about a week left. So there's no reason to wait a week just to collect the same of what we could get right now. So we'll go ahead and probably do that tomorrow. And then the other one, kind of a similar situation, except for this one expires tomorrow, and that's FedEx ran way up the beak. Again, same thing. Now with this one, uh, we tried to get out. We're not. I don't want to pay up above the the width of our call spread, which is just a dollar. So I had an order in for ninety nine cents to close this all day. Never got filled. So we'll probably just let this expire. And like I said, these these options last day of trading is tomorrow, and so we'll just let that expire and collect that beak profit there on FedEx. The other thing I'm looking at is oil. So if we look at USO, which is the corresponding ETF, implied volatility is pretty low. So not looking to sell a strangle or, or sell any premium necessarily, but the options in CL are down to uh, under that 21 day mark, actually at 20 days to expiration. And so looking at potentially putting on an iron duck in this cycle here, which toss labels as Feb 20, which is interesting because that has 20 days to expiration, but there's also one they label as Jan, which has 22. So they love to make things a little bit confusing, but this is the cycle here that we'll be looking at tomorrow to potentially put on a new duck. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is rut. So we've got a weekly double calendar in rut just outside of our range right here. So if we can just by chance get a tiny move down, uh, we'll be closing this out tomorrow and hopefully be able to book a profit. I mean, this thing just does not like to pull back, but actually it's it's down 0.05% today. So it's one of the indexes that's actually down. Feels like it's crashing, but I mean, if we could literally just get a little move like, like this, just a little teeny tiny move, we'll get out of that one with a profit. So we'll see what happens. Have a good evening. Talk to you tomorrow.